Have you ever had to procure multiple different subcontractors and suppliers on a construction project? Have you ever struggled to work out when to procure all these packages? Well, this video is designed for you. My name is Tim and I'm a project engineer with lots of experience on the design and construction of major infrastructure projects. I've been building short courses to teach the fundamental construction management skills to engineers and other construction management professionals. So far, we've had over a thousand students enroll in our courses. Each course is loaded with hours of content and practice activities to make sure you're equipped with the skills you need to excel at your job. This short video is an extract of our course on construction procurement management, where we'll talk about the procurement schedule, what it is, how to develop it, and how to integrate it into the overall project schedule. If you find this video useful and interesting, check out the link in the below description to our complete Udemy course on construction procurement management. Welcome to section 2.5, the procurement schedule. Now we've worked out all the packages we need to procure from the market, the next step is to work out when we will procure them. We do this by identifying for each package when the goods and services need to be on site and when the design has progressed enough to be able to issue the package to market. In this section, we're going to talk about the procurement schedule, its context, its contents, integrating the procurement schedule into the overall project schedule, the development of the procurement schedule, treatments applied to accelerate procurement, the outputs of the procurement schedule, and finish off by going through an example. In the previous section, we identified all the packages that we were going to procure from the market when develop, developing the work breakdown structure. In this section, we're now going to work out when we will need to procure all these packages. When we procure a package, we'll be driven by two key things. The earliest we could start procurement, so this means when all the predecessor activities required to conduct procurement for a given package are complete, and also the latest date the goods and services be being procured will be required on site. All this information is captured in the procurement schedule. The procurement schedule lists out all the tender packages, all the steps in the procurement process, the lead times for equipment and subcontractors, and when the goods and services being procured will be available on site. I've attached to the course notes a copy of an example procurement schedule so you can see the type of detail and contents of it. The procurement schedule needs to be integrated into the overall project schedule to ensure that procurement does not cause delays. Basically, the procurement schedule covers all the dates for each key activity in the procurement process. These key procurement dates are when preparation of the tender documents begins, when tender packages are to be reviewed, when packages are to be released to the market, the tender period, the tender closing date, the tender evaluation period, a period of time to finalise a negotiated contract, a contract award date, lead times of goods and services, any contingency, and the dates the goods and services are required on site. Reasonable and conservative estimates need to be allowed for in calculating the duration of these activities. It's better to have more contingency rather than less, as there are always unforeseen circumstances that arise on projects. The procurement schedule also refers a, to a baseline for monitoring actual performance against planned performance. This allows any delays to be flagged early and appropriately managed. For example, if there are delays in the design, we can instantly see the effect on procurement and then construction. The procurement schedule needs to be integrated into the overall project schedule. The two important interfaces we will need to establish are when, can, when can procurement start, the early start date, and when the goods and services being procured are needed on site, the late finish date. The early start date for procurement will typically be driven by design. This is because the design will provide the basis for developing a detailed scope of works. Any design ambiguity will lead to an unclear scope and any design changes will lead to costly variations. Therefore, we, we would ideally begin procurement of an issue for construction design. However, this is rarely possible as there isn't enough time in the project schedule to allow for this. It's worth noting that as a head contractor, we may sometimes rely on design services from a subcontractor. If this is the case, 
we will procure these packages during the concept design stage and include their detailed design services in the scope of works. The late finish date for procurement will be driven by the master project schedule. This will be when the goods and services being procured are required to be ready on site to meet the overall project schedule. To develop the procurement schedule, we first need to list out all the key procurement activities. These are the steps in the procurement process for which we need to identify a date and duration. This will be the structure of the procurement schedule. Next, we need to list out along the left hand side all the packages to be procured. You can see this on the left hand side. I've listed out for our street lighting example, the packages we're going to procure. So the street lighting civil works, the supply of lighting poles, crane services, supply of distribution boards, and an electrical contractor. Next, we need to estimate the activity durations for all the procurement activities. Some of these will be driven by the project team, such as how long we allow subcontractors to take to prepare their quotes, while others will be driven by potential subcontractors and suppliers, such as how long their equipment takes to be manufactured, typically referred to as a lead time. Reasonable contingency needs to be allowed throughout for any unexpected delays. Once we have estimated activity durations, we must then populate the procurement schedule by forward and back calculating dates. To forward calculate, we take the early start date and determine all the procurement activities from this date. So if the early start date for the electrical contractor package is based off having an issue for construction in street lighting design, and this is the 10th of July, since we know all the durations of the activities, we can then calculate all the dates based off the activity durations. This calculates the early finish date. Finally, to back calculate, we take the late finish date and determine all the procurement milestones based on this date. This is done by subcontracting from the work start date, the activity durations. This calculates the late start date, or the latest date procurement can start. Ideally, the earliest start date should be before the late start date. This means procurement will not fall on the project critical path. If, however, the late start date occurs before the early start date, this means that even if we start procurement at the early start date, we will not have the goods and services ready on site when required to meet the construction project. This issue should be addressed to ensure the procurement does not cause delay on site works. We can do this a number of separate ways. We can bring forward the early start date by accelerating the design and procuring off an earlier revision of the design. However, this will introduce design risk or by procuring smaller early works packages to meet the construction program and allow some extra time to procure larger packages. Alternatively, we could reduce the procurement activity durations or finally, we could delay the date the goods and services are required on site by accelerating the construction works. All of these options will have other consequences, like increased risk or cost. The proper judgment and assessment of the situation needs to be made to attain the best for project outcome. As an output to this stage, we should have a fully integrated and populated procurement schedule that will be used as a basis for monitoring and controlling performance during procurement. It will help us to ensure procurement is properly planned, flag any potential procurement delays, early and ensure constraints can be planned and managed. To finish off this section, have a good look at the example procurement schedule attached to the course notes. You can see for our street lighting example, it lists out the packages to be procured, the key procurement activities and set states for all of these. By now, having covered the procurement schedule, we've gone through all the key tools used to plan procurement. We'll finish off section two by covering the roles and responsibilities of the pro project team during procurement.